Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the McGonagall Boxing Podcast. Let's get straight down to it, shall we? Because it's another sensational night of boxing last night. Uh, it really was. 73,100 uh, in Texas last night. Um, and it was fantastic to see the Dallas Cowboy Stadium. Um, you know, the crowds are back. It's looking like post-COVID now, isn't it? It's fantastic. No more lockdowns. No more boxing without crowds now. Let's get the ball moving forward. They've shown the blueprint. They can do it safely. So let's see the rest of the world. Obviously, apart from struggling countries that we know who they are at the moment. But, you know, the countries that are coming out of it, let's get the ball rolling. Let's get back to normal life. Fantastic to see. Credit to matchroom boxing. I know Eddie Hearn has got his critics at times. But listen, he put on a fantastic show last night. And no expense. Um, spared great production and design who have, again had their critics you know matched them each way the production was much better and they deserve credit for that however the commentator Sergio Mora uh, the other American um, kind of home commentator that presents it and Cole Froch were appalling last night I don't know what fight they are watching it's, it's almost like Mora every time he commentates he's a sea level fighter at best and he's a sea level commentator he's clearly not educated outside of American fighters in the American market extremely biased towards the home fighter and he just doesn't offer any insight uh, to the opponent at all now to and Froch I don't know what it is he's maybe bitter um, that you know he only got one real big fight at the end of his career against you know George Groves, I don't know. Um, maybe he's bitter that you know he didn't fight a pound for pound best. Um, or sorry, when he did, he got schooled by Andre Ward. I don't know. Listen, I don't know what Froch deal is, but he seems to be like this. Um, you know, just completely scores fights inaccurately. Just give Billy Joe two rounds. I don't know what fight they're seeing. It's almost like they're lured in by the Mexican crowd. And I, t- I said this pre-fight. Anything that comes remotely near Billy Joe lands on the elbows, the arms, they're going to cheer for. Of course they are. But you expect experts, so-called experts, who fought, been there, done it to know better to know when the punches are actually landed and having an effect that's not to say um, Canelo didn't land and I scored it 4-4 going into round 9 Canelo had some great rounds and he landed some clean body shots and some nice uppercuts and ultimately it was the uppercut that did the eye socket Um, but listen but Billy Joe put on a masterclass, five, six, seven. He was schooling Canelo at times with his footwork and speed and counter, counter punching. And he buzzed Canelo. I'm not saying he hurt Canelo, but he buzzed him and he marked him up um, with some nice left hooks. Um, so to give um, Billy Joe two rounds is disgraceful. It was a very, very even fight. That's not to say that Canelo would have wouldn't have taken over. I could see him taking over, I suck it or not. He was starting. As predicted in the pre-fight podcast, to take over the fight, then body shots, which I said he was going to target because he's not going to quick enough to land to the head, was starting to slow Billy Joe down. And there's big talk that yes, he could have well stopped Billy Joe on the ropes around the 10-11 mark, but or given the win, won the points decision. Um, but again, the judges were outrageous. A two to three score, judges scored at six two as well. This is the problem you've got against Canelo because the crowd sway so much, and he fights in Texas or Vegas, which is pretty much home turf for him now. You're always up against it. So very disappointed with the commentary. Again, very disappointed with the judges. But we knew this going in. We knew it was going to be pro Canelo. What we didn't know is that obviously Billy Joe is clearly world class. He showed that. He sublime boxing skills at times. He started a bit slow. I agree with Eddie Hearn. But then he started to get into his rhythm. But listen, it was a beautiful uppercut that did it, um, you know, and this was the dangerous punch from um, Canelo and the body shots. And he caught um, K- uh, Billy Joe, who, let's be honest, does have um, a history of starting to tie down the late rounds. He did it with Andy Lee, did it with um, Eubank Jr. even. He starts to get tired, and that's where he got caught. He got caught with a beautiful uppercut that did his eye socket. He didn't quit. And it's, you've seen these, these trolls online now saying, oh, he's a quitter. He's not. You know, that eye was very bad. He couldn't see out of it and you're going to fight the best fight in the world with one eye are you kidding me um, Tibbs did the right thing it was disappointing of course it was we're all, we're all disappointed that you know the fight ended like it did but Mark Tibbs made the right fight decision for his fighter he cares about his fighter Billy Joe can now go and fight on another day went straight to hospital it was the right thing to do even Canelo went back to his corner after he 
landed that punch in eight rounds said listen this fight's over there's no way he can continue so that shows you how bad it was and the photos speak a million words don't they that it was dented in um and it's obviously not just the eye it then caves into the cheekbone so he's in agony and you can't see with one eye you know you're not going to fight canelo like that you need your reflexes you need to be sharp and it would have been it wouldn't have gone past another round there's no question you know billy joe was starting to will he showed heart just staying in for a minute and a half of round eight incredible really but he wouldn't survive round nine with one eye um but you know listen that's not to say that he would have survived the fight anyway i was impressed with the power Canelo punches harder than I even thought. He really does. And you can hear the fuds. He's got great technique. And, and you see his whole body, doesn't he? Rotation into these body shots. And overhand right. I thought, and I, it's true at times, Billy Joe did sting Canelo. But I was hoping he'd do a little bit more damage. I think uh, what I feared was Canelo realised, 7 or 8, this guy can't hurt me. And started to walk him down a bit, which was fearful. Um, and he was starting to, you know, get into a rhythm. So, I... I I think it may have well ended uh, around 11. Uh, I saw it on those. I saw it. And I think Canelo was ultimately going to take over the fight. I reckon he'd have probably won it 7 5. Um, you know, um, later on in, in, in the. Um, down the stretch was it was not for the eye socket and that's something Billy Joe needs to work on he needs to be more active I still think he's got three four years great years left in him and if he works his way up he can get in a rematch again but he needs to go after you know the, the, the other champions in the division and hopefully score Eubank Jr and get a rematch maybe a year or two years down the line but he needs to work on his stamina down the home stretch that's his biggest weakness that's something I feared and you could see him starting to get caught more and more but you know, the skills are there. You could see he was making Canelo miss and making him pay. And Canelo, I said this, his biggest weakness is still his footwork. He's still flat-footed at times and still pedestrian-like. And this is what he got exposed with Lara, um, got exposed even by Kovalev, and got exposed by Mayweather. A slick boxer who can stay out of range is going to make Canelo struggle. And he looked average at times last night. The crowd was silent, uh, round six, round seven. And so he's not the perfect fighter. He is beatable. But you've got to have the skill set and the resilience and the toughness to do it for 12 rounds because Canelo will keep coming. He's got a great gas engine and he's in his prime. He can throw power punches for 12 rounds. So the blueprints there, Billy Joe again, a bit like Khan, showed it in stints, didn't he? Mayweather's the only real one who's done it consistently round after round after round. And that's going to be a special fighter who can do that. Andrade has the skill set to do it. I just don't think he has the gas engine, gas tank. Again, I think Andrade will start off well. I think he'll you know, your box can allow his head off at times much slicker much quicker great footwork but I just don't think he's got the engine and he's not active enough a bit like Billy Joe so he's going to get caught late on and I think Canelo probably will be down on the scorecards against Andrade but will catch him late or win the, the later rounds to win the decision like I say it's very tough to win a decision against Canelo anyway um, but the judging is are disgraceful there's no question about it and you, if next person next champion that fights Canelo needs to be really firm with the judges because this is a big issue. But listen, credit, credit to Canelo. He wasn't at his best and he still won. So that's a sign of a great champion. He just knows how to win. Um, he punches harder than I thought he would. And he's got a good variety. We knew this. The body, the uppercut, the overhand right. Um, and we know he's got a good chin. I mean, because Billy Joe caught him at times and he kept coming. He got marked up as well. Um, but listen, uh, overall, it was a good performance from Billy Joe. I give him a strong seven and a half, eight out of ten. I'd like to have seen him maybe be a little bit more active with his hands, but the tactic was there, wasn't it? It was good to see one, two, cover up, one, two, cover up. You don't want to throw too many punches against Canelo because he's such an excellent counter puncher and he's got brilliant hand speed. Hasn't got great foot speed, but he's got brilliant hand speed. So that's the tactic you need to do. Um, and it was good that you know Billy Joe just wasn't just running all the time. He, you know, he did take trying to take the centre of the ring, um, and that's what you got to do against Canelo. But I'd like to have seen him. Certainly the later rounds, just get out of range a little bit more because he was getting caught and you get off the ropes. You don't want to be on the ropes and that started to happen round seven, round eight. Um, you know, take the centre or around the ring. Don't lean on it too much because that allows Canelo to land in devastating body punches, which he did do. And you could see they were starting to take its toll. Um, and, you know, no one really punches the body anymore, do they, like Canelo does. So brilliant, brilliant uh, tactic there. 
And, you know, listen, he's going to beat Caleb Plant. He's easily. Um, Billy Joe was the best competition. He's going to beat Benavidez, who hasn't got the experience, the activity, or the variety, or skill. He's, you know, he's just going to beat these guys easily. And I think he stops Plant. So he's going to become the undisputed champion. Credit to him. He deserves it because he hasn't taken any shortcuts. He's beaten them all. Destroy Callum Smith. This fight was far more competitive than the Callum Smith fight, even though it didn't go to full 12. And Billy Joe's a better fight than Callum Smith. That's what we saw today evident clearly um but listen credit canelo we didn't f- cater for a damaged eye socket how can anyone predict that but listen it was the punch it was the uppercut that did it billy joe was starting to tire but he deserves full credit for three rounds five six seven he showed that canelo can be beaten he showed that canelo does have weaknesses and after f- eight rounds not just me a lot of people including michael buffer who had billy joe up scored it minimum for all so that he deserves credit especially when you've got seventy thousand people cheering against you hold your head up billy joe you can come again it's up to him if he wants to come again now obviously after a big payday and that you know he's probably going to be out a minimum eight months with that eye does he want to come again at 32 i hope he does i still believe he's got a few years left i still think he's got some big fights left and i still think if he he impresses within big fights he can get the rematch credit canada goes on to the undisputed now i think he's going to be cataplan and then you know he'll probably move up to light heavy but for now credit both fighters a fantastic event and we go again ready for joshua fury now